Hey guys, Ross here. Thanks for joining me for another daily shave. Today's shave is going to feature the latest offering from Holy Cow, and that is Vor V. And as you can tell, this falls right along with the holiday theme of Halloween. So without further ado, let's get right into things. I've got the soap loaded up here in my Simpson Trafalgar T3 synthetic brush. Probably loaded this for about 30 or 40 seconds, not too long. Just my face a little wet here. We'll get right into the lather. So Vor V, at least for this version of the soap that I have, is in the Sierra base, which is the tallow base. It consists of donkey milk, water buffalo milk, donkey whey protein, water buffalo whey protein. It's also got cocoa butter, cocum butter, lanolin, hops extract, shea butter, really just a plethora of great ingredients. I do think I had my brush maybe slightly under hydrated when I was loading this soap. So as you can see, I'm just kind of dunking my brush a little bit to add a little bit more water in. The Sierra base can absolutely take water. I would say it's thirsty, but not overly thirsty. And one great thing that I like about the Sierra base, which probably is, is pretty hard to tell my lighting, but I tend to get a, a really nice sheen from the Sierra base. And that kind of really lets me know when I have this soap dialed in. Just add a little bit more in here. There we go, that's starting to look pretty good. Now, Holy Cow does make a vegan version of this soap. They do really with uh, all of their offerings. So if, uh, if that is something that sways your decision, there's no, no fear in that since they have both covered. As you can see, this is a fairly low structure lather, so it stays nice, nice and close to the face. I have about three days worth of growth and I'm going to switch things up a little bit. I'm going to be using the West Coast Shaving 84 BT with a fresh feather blade. So hopefully I'm not regretting the blade choice today. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the scent. So Vor V, as you can tell by the label, is a Halloween themed soap and scent offering. There are quite a few notes in here. So this has geranium, raspberry, nutmeg, saffron, oud, black tea, cashmere, musk, <clears throat> leather, amber, and vanilla. So that is quite a lot of notes there. And what the way I would describe it is that this is a very well blended scent. It definitely has a very, it has a, I wouldn't say very dark, but it has a dark aspect to it, a dark and 
slightly warm take to it. And once I kind of get past that initial dark aspect to it, the one note that is unmistakable to me that I pick up is raspberry. And I think that is really what sort of makes this a very unique scent offering, especially for a Halloween theme. I'm not sure if um, the projection of that note was sort of intended, but it certainly stands out to me. And that's, um, that's the single note I feel like could make or break uh, one's de decision, excuse me, to, uh, to give this soap a shot. I actually really enjoy it. I haven't really smelled anything like this before. And being a, a lover of the fall and all of the fall type of scents that are offered, this one, uh, it certainly stands out on its own. And when I describe this as having a, a dark aspect to it, um, I would say this is not as dark as something, say, a Bear Stern Man Hallows or a Katie's Bubbles 322. It's not quite that earthy or dirty. I still think this scent is actually very much approachable. I think uh, it really is the, for me, I feel like it's that raspberry note that, uh, that really sort of makes this scent. And unlike most other holy cow scents that I have tried in the past, usually I find holy cow's scent strength to be slightly geared towards the lighter end of the spectrum. But this one, and again, it could just be the raspberry note. It comes off a little bit stronger for me. Uh, probably somewhere around a, a seven out of 10 for me. Once I get that, uh, once I get that raspberry note, it's, that's really all I can detect. But I certainly understand, I, I think this is very much appropriate as a holiday theme. And given all of the notes that are in this, it's uh, it's pretty cool to see how they all work together and come together to uh, formulate this scent. If I had to guess, I wanna say the, the sort of warmth of this particular scent is from the musk. But uh, it, it really is outstanding. I think this actually might be my, my favorite scent in the uh, Sierra vase that I've tried. So now we're going against the grain. Now, as many know, feather blades are notorious for having the reputation of being the sharpest double-edged blade out there. So I try to give it as much respect as I can when I use it. I don't actually own too many of them, but occasionally when I have this sort of thicker stubble on my face, I try to go to a, a slightly sharper blade. And since I have about three days growth, I figured this might be a a nice blade to switch it up and go to for this shave. Mm. 
despite the fact that it's such a sharp blade, I feel like if you sort of give it that respect, you'll start to get the smoothness aspect of it. And uh, one big thing that I've seen from a lot of people that uh, either enjoy these blades or tend to have some familiarity with them is a lot of people will actually recommend uh, sort of palm stropping before your first use as it can sort of uh, make the blade a little bit smoother for your first shave and not just, you know, be sharp and potentially rough for uh, for your first shave. And I, I can tell you my, my face is, my cheeks are just absolutely BBS out of the gates after that against the grain. Now, one other thing that I actually would like to mention is, uh, you know, for, I've been in this hobby for about four and a half years now. And there are still some aspects to shaving that, um, uh, that I'm still learning today. And one of those things which um, actually helps me with both straight razor shaving and with DE shaving or single edge shaving, something that I've been trying to be a little bit more conscious of, is not overstretching your skin. I tend to do that quite a bit, especially with my straight razor shaves, to sort of get the, uh, you know, those creases, especially around my Adam's apple. And that can easily... You can easily overdo it by overstretching, and that's going to result in weepers. So I've really been focusing on that quite a bit for the past, I would say, few weeks. And my face has, it's been significantly different in terms of my shaves. Far less weepers, far less irritation, and it really is something... I feel like I've, I've seen other people kind of preach it over time. And I guess I never really thought much of it. I kind of overlooked, you know, the statement of overstretching. Um, but it's, it's definitely, it's, it's been a real thing for me. So I would, uh, that's one tip that I can tell you that I've, I've learned after all this time. And that's really, you know, benefiting me in terms of the shaves. Well, let me rinse my face and we'll get into the post shave. That was a fantastic shave. I have a little bit here, but I didn't want to push it too much, especially with a feather. I'm still content with where it's at, so we'll leave it there. All right. Now, Holy Cow does offer matching post shave products for, for War V. I do not have them, but uh, there's an aftershave and there's also a toner and balm if you are interested. For today, I'll just be finishing it with Zingari's Unscented Splash. This is non-alcoholic. I've really been enjoying this, especially if I don't have a matching post-shave product for the soaps that I use. It obviously is just very neutral. There's no, no scent to it. I can even still smell Vor V over this. So that, uh, again, that raspberry note is really, really popping out for me. All right. Well, that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the shave. I know I did. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop a line below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Until next time, see ya.